What's up guys, c 13 here, and today's video is going to be another update, um, just a few weeks after the last video, um, on the uh, Strawberry Hydroponic Grow. So, as you can see here, um, I already harvested that one strawberry that was, was over there in the last video that you saw, and then I also harvested another one. Um, and now we've got three more coming in that are extremely ripe. I left them on specifically so I could shoot this video, uh, but after this I'm going to pick them because <laughs> they're so ripe that uh, you can see they're getting dark, and that's how you know they're, they're, they're at their peak ripeness. Um, that's honestly why, for example, when you go to the store and you, you buy strawberries there, they're always just a, kind of a light to moderate red color because... By the time they get to the store, uh, at most they're sort of getting sort of ripe, but basically they're picked very underripe so that they don't rot by the time they get to the store. Um, but you know, growing them yourself basically means you can let them ripen right up until the point that they'll rot a day later, but that they're at their peak ripeness. So that's what, what, what you really see here. For example, you can see how the seeds on those strawberries are beginning to turn a dark color that's how you know that you've reached peak ripeness because um, normally they're gonna be a lighter color but you see how when they're starting to get dark I'm gonna move this stuff the uh, buds out of the way so you can see that um, you can see there you see how the, the seeds are not light colored anymore that they're dark that's how you know that the strawberry is at its peak ripeness in addition the strawberry will be just ever so slightly soft um, it won't be so firm, but it won't be mushy, right? You won't be able to like push your finger through it, but you'll be able to feel it soft and the surface will be ever so slightly sticky. Again, not gooey. It shouldn't leave a residue on your fingers, but you can tell that it's at its peak ripeness. Now over here we have one flower that I pollinated the other day. Looks like it took, because as you can see, the center there that has all the pistols on it, the, uh, the ovum or whatever the, I don't know the terminology, but basically the the fruiting body is staying green and full. If it did not take, that would begin to shrink and turn brown. Um, over here, I'm checking my finger here. This flower just opened up today, uh, so it's not going to be ready to pollinate. What I've noticed about this particular strain of strawberry, um, or you know, I don't know if this is strawberries in general, but definitely with this particular strain, uh, when the flowers first open, the first day that they're open, they almost produce almost no pollen. When you rub your finger on the stamens you get almost no pollen on them. It's really not until the second day uh, that they produce pollen, and that's honestly your last day to get a good pollination too. It's a very small window for sure. Um, so I'm not sure if that's an evolutionary thing with most strawberries or if it's just this strain is weird. Um, but definitely you wanna check because the flowers are only open for at most about two to maybe three days um, before the petals start falling off and they die. And the first day, there's almost no pollen. Like this is the first day this has been open. I rub my fingers on there. Um, let's see, yeah, you see, there's no pollen on my finger. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, also on this plant, which seems to be producing even more than the other plant, um, we've got another strawberry coming in here, another one coming in here, and yet another flower coming in here. So today, uh, th this coming week I'll be getting in more plants and hopefully I can repopulate this system and ensure that they actually survive through the uh, initial transplant stage unlike the other batch um, because of the <laughs> issues with water depth but anyway guys I just wanted to give you a quick update these plants are doing great um, I have nothing but good things to say about the plants that I purchased I'll leave a link in the description below um, but again really it's more of that I've never grown strawberries before in a hydroponic system and honestly I think that is something that I will grow all the time and actually when I get home from school my parents already told me that they want me to help them set up a garden so that they can grow fresh strawberries year-round um, there are certain plants that just don't do well in hydroponic systems for example like climbing plants really struggle because positioning lights so that they don't just continually try to reach for the light is very difficult with a climbing plant or even tall plants right but these strawberries 
Oh my god, they have, they've taken so well. As you can see, the green, the leaves are green, luscious and beautiful. They're they're filling out and again, the light is is pretty close, but you can see the leaves have stopped. I mean, this leaf is is not growing any taller. And that's the great thing is I was worried that oh, maybe the strawberry leaves they'll try to reach for the light and burn themselves. Um, but no, these these leaves are, are this, haven't gotten any taller, um, and it's just taking so well. And so, if you're somebody who likes fresh fruit, um, and you want to grow your own hydroponic fresh fruit, and you're thinking, well, what can I grow? If you like strawberries, go for it, <laughs> because unlike other things like. Uh, like citrus is extremely difficult to grow because it's even the small ones it's a tree and they're very picky about you know pH and and getting the right amount of nutrients too much or too little they they hate it too much or too little water they hate it uh, the temperature's wrong they won't grow right they'll start dropping leaves and they're susceptible to all kinds of insects and diseases um, if you want to grow something like blueberries like one of my favorite uh, I guess it's not really a it's a fruit slash berry but it's a berry but I like blueberries a lot, but they are extremely painful to grow. I have a blueberry bush in my backyard at home, but that only produces about a handful of blueberries the entire season. Um, and it would, even in a hydroponic system, if I were to get the shrub, you know, um, low ground type blueberries, which is my favorite, they grow small, low to the ground, um, basically as tall as these strawberry plants here, they would take so much space and more importantly time to produce incredibly small amounts of fruit I mean I've had these plants for about a month and a half at this point maybe two months max and they're already producing fruit and if all the other plants had survived I would be harvesting between five and six strawberries a week so my point is if you want maximum yield and minimum time get yourself some bare root ever bearing strawberries and you will have a blast. Um, again, uh, if you guys are more interested in some of the techniques and all that, I can totally make videos on this, but I kind of just wanted this series to be about um, my sort of progress with trying this out for the first time. I've grown all kinds of other plants, but never strawberries. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. If you want to see more, subscribe. If you have any comments or questions, leave them below. And as always, I'll see you next time.